Today, we're going to talk about AMD's RDNA 3. That's going to be what's going to replace this RDNA 2 6900 XT, one of the best GPUs, in my opinion, last generation, but it had a few issues, primarily competing with NVIDIA, and then some issues caused by AMD themselves. Now, what does AMD have in store for us? First, when is it coming out? And we might have a little bit of a surprise from AMD. There may be not one of these guys, but maybe two top end models coming out we're going to discuss what that may mean first when are these gpus coming how long do you have to wait well there's good news and bad news let's start with the bad news there's a potential delay recently somebody has reported this is a, a leaker on twitter that has reported accurate information before that while the announcement is still coming when we thought it was there's a potential that the actual physical release of that next generation or dna3 may have a little slight delay Delay. nothing to really be concerned about maybe something like a week now when is it going to be announced that's still going to be november 3rd that's when amd is going to be planning to tell us what gpus that are they're going to be launching and we know from last time they do like giving us some surprises like when they told us about the 6800 xt they then later on said oh there's more there's a 6900 xt which is this guy that i'm holding here this is actually a reference edition and we're expecting you know very similar to happen this time there should be two gpus announced on that date november 3rd and most likely from all the information that we've seen so far they should be releasing about a month later during that first week in december previously we did expect them to release it maybe the last week of november but it seems like it's been pushed that week forward which i mean we've been you know patiently waiting for gpus for a very long time i don't really think that's really a big deal at all but maybe they're just pushing it over to maybe get some more product out there we're going to address some of these issues as well and after they announce it we're going to know exactly what's going to be coming but from speculation right now they're going to be releasing their higher tier gpus it seems like and i have to say this the budget gpu market is really pretty much neglected in terms of you know new gpu releases nvidia has just you know focused on the rtx 4090 and the 4080 and now amd is probably going to be doing the same with with two top-end GPUs. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor. Priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. And now let's get back to the video. The only new GPU in the market that even caters to the budget market is going to be this guy behind me here. That's the Intel Arc GPU. Even though even the most expensive one has an MSRP of 349, that GPU has its own problems with availability, driver issues. It's really not all the way there. So a little bit of a disappointing release, but it's interesting nevertheless. AMD's initial release of their two higher end GPUs. Let's talk about, there's three different possibilities in my opinion. Let's talk about the one that we definitely know would be coming. That would be something like a 7900 XT. More than likely, maybe this would have something like 20 gigabytes of VRAM. It would literally fall right in the middle. Definitely the interesting thing here is is going to be to think about the pricing and the performance versus nvidia and then of course the next step will be actual availability for real users it doesn't matter what youtubers tell you if they get a sample and then it's sold out perpetually for two years like often what happened with the 6900 xt this was great at 999 dollars very few people got to buy it at that price however most of the time it was almost double the price or at least a significant markup from msrp so that's going to be a big issue so 7900 XT, this is going to be sort of an educated guess based on the market conditions. I think most likely if there's a GPU above it, it's likely to be about $1,099. That's the price that the 6950 XT, the one that sort of was a little bit better than this guy, that's what AMD priced it at. The original was $999. So going up by $100 seems fair, considering NVIDIA did the exact same thing by upping their 4090 from 1499's 3090 price to 1599 for the 4090. So I would say that's seems fair. The question here is, what are the other two GPUs going to be or the next GPU if they only launch two? They could do two things here. 
either they're going to do a model below the 7900 XT, like a 7800 XT. That one could potentially be priced like that original 4080 12 gigabyte was supposed to be, maybe like 899, 799, somewhere around that range. That GPU would definitely be very interesting. I would guess it probably would come with like 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And of course, it would just be a little bit pared down compared to the 7900 XT in general. That's an area of the market where AMD could really establish a lot of dominance if that GPU in traditional rasterization performance, and we're talking about not ray tracing here as Nvidia does have a big advantage, at least up to the current standards. That's where AMD could really, really strike Nvidia where they have have absolutely nothing new to show. The cheapest RTX 4000 GPU is the 4080 16 gigabyte at $1,200. If you want an NVIDIA GPU below that, you're going to have to go to last generation RTX 3000, which depending on the price you get it for, definitely not a bad deal if you get it cheaply enough. But if there's a new generation around, wouldn't you prefer to get something from AMD that's competitive with like a 3090 or 3090 Ti, but it has newer technology, maybe even perhaps for a cheaper price. That's what AMD should really bank on. So I really do hope that they release something under that nine or $800 price point. And even though that's still really high end, at least you start to go into a more realistic segment of the market where not every single GPU is over a thousand dollars. It would make sense if the 7900 XT comes in at a thousand ninety nine or maybe even eleven ninety nine, if it undercuts the 4080 and if it performs better in rasterization. Now it's possible it may perform close to a 4090. I mean, after all, the 6900 XT did come pretty close to a 3090, and traditional rasterization is still very important. That's just regular frames per second. NVIDIA does have a big advantage with ray tracing, but not every game is using that, and not every player really wants to use that either. Sometimes these other things like ray tracing and DLSS, I mean, AMD has their own FSR. They're great technologies, but they don't always work as perfectly as gamers would want them to work because of implementation in different games, different issues, maybe with their, you know, other uh, components in their system. So while ideally, yes, a 4090 is going to outperform something like a 7900 XT, probably across the board in a very balanced way, it's also more likely to be much more expensive. But we've seen that even at lower resolutions, maybe AMD can get somewhat of an advantage at times. If you want to play at 4K with everything maxed out, no doubt the 4090 is probably where you definitely want to be. But but at 1440p and below for people that want really high refresh rate, the 4090 is really overkill for 1440p. It's going to bottleneck basically any CPU, including the newest like 13900K, 7950X. It's going to have a lot more issues where you have a huge diminishing returns at that level. If you're playing 1440p or below, much better to pick up a 4080 or maybe a 7900 XT or 7800 XT. It's going to make a lot more sense for the majority of those users. At 4K, 4090 is amazing, of course. Even at that level, it still bottlenecks in some games when we're talking about the CPU, which is definitely some pretty new stuff. Like, usually, 4K never bottlenecks the CPU. If the CPU is new enough, it's usually pretty, you know, uh, consistent across the board. But for the first time, the 4090 is so powerful that it does tend to bottleneck in some games. We're not talking about most games, but some games, that behavior can definitely present itself, meaning that anything below 4K, you might be better off with whatever AMD has, or even one of the cheaper GPUs from NVIDIA themselves. So that leaves us with one more possibility. There, of course, the 7900 XT, which probably is going to be the one coming, but I think there's going to be a second one. If it's not a 7800 XT, that's going to be under a thousand, something that would perform maybe close to a 4080 for a lot cheaper. What else would AMD plan? Well, potentially there have been some murmurs and some leaks of an XT X version, which would be basically what the 6950 was compared to the 6900 XT. Now, this is a GPU that potentially would have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It would have just faster memory in general. It would have probably more CUDA cores. Generally, it would just be much, much more powerful compared to a 7900 XT. Now, I have no doubt that this GPU more than likely will be coming at some point. We just don't know if it's going to be right at launch or if they're holding it to compete with like a 4090 Ti or if NVIDIA releases some type of a special model. Remember, if 
that GPU comes out, a 7950 XT, then you can expect it to probably match or even beat the 4090, at least in traditional rasterization. Ray tracing, we don't know yet what AMD is going to be able to, you know, jump in terms of performance gains from last generation to this one. So that's up for debate. Probably won't catch Nvidia, but they could make some impressive gains. But the problem here is that price will also creep very, very close to the 4090. If they do release a 7950 XTX or a 79 XTX, you can bet that that price might be like $1399, $1499. They may price it very close to the 4090, especially if they can back it up with performance that may match or even beat the 4090 in traditional rasterization. So I'm not sure if that's a GPU that they should release right now. They should probably hold that to compete with like a 40. 90 Ti. I think it's more important for the gaming market that a sub $1,000 GPU comes out. We don't need any more expensive GPUs. The 4090 is there. That's expensive enough for people that want the best. We need GPUs that start to creep down in price and still offer next generation performance. That's where AMD can really steal the show. If they try to be as premium as Nvidia, they're going to fail this generation. That's going to be really the truth of it. Can they actually produce something at a really good price? Hopefully, sub $1,000 for these high-end GPUs to at least start to get closer to reality for a lot of people. And then eventually later on, we could see great GPUs in that five or $600 range again that don't have to be so expensive or else PC gamers are really going to start losing out and going over to consoles and things like that if they get priced out of the market. All right, guys. So let me know what you think down below. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.